Hello everybody and welcome back. Root Beer here and uh, we're going to finish off our look at constructible numbers. I'm not really doing the, the topic uh, in depth because to really talk about constructible numbers, I mean yes I've shown you can do A plus B and things like that, but I feel that to really do it justice you should be also following it up with uh, um, sort of a Galois theory, Galois extension proof that you know you can't really uh, const if, constructible numbers come up when you talk about problems of antiquity and sort of to cap that off you should really prove that those three problems can't be done and you do that with Galois theory. Now as I'm aiming this at a sort of early to pre-high school level we're not going to be doing any of that stuff. You want to look up Galois theory on your own that's fine G-A-L-O-I-S but it's sort of an advanced university topic. But I am going to sort of finish up what I started. So I've shown you that A plus B, A minus B, these are constructible, given an A and a B that were constructible. I've shown you that uh, you can construct A times B and A divided by B, provided those lengths are constructible. And I also talked a little bit about the problems of antiquity, and I showed you that you can uh, construct, well, you, you start by assuming you can construct one. I've had this one here every video, but you can get two and three, so you can get all the positive integers, and from there, um, after the last video where you can do division, then you can get all the positive rationals, and uh, you can add them all up and uh, everything. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get the square root of a given number, and this will allow you to construct uh, any sort of real root to a quadratic, any positive real root to a quadratic, and uh, it really adds things to the theory. And then, you know, if you can construct a square root, so if you can construct square root 2, you can construct the square root of square root 2. So you can get fourth roots, uh, you can get eighth roots, all that fun stuff, and it's just a very quick trick. So I've got my 1 here, and you'll be given some other constructible length. So what have I been doing? I've been putting those in red, haven't I? So we get some constructible length. And we, we would call him A. So there's our constructible length. Now what we, we want to do is get a sort of circle with A plus the given one. This is, a, this is another one just like the last video where you need the the one length is given. It's got to be constructible. It's just it's there. Okay. Uh, so unlike sort of the a plus b and the a minus b, this is another one where we need one lying around as well. So we're going to construct a, a circle of diameter a plus one, and then uh, we're going to sort of construct the square root in between them as a perpendicular line. So I'll show you how to do that. But first, let's reproduce. Let's reproduce our length a and add it onto our 1 here. So we've seen this before, but uh, let's go through it. I'm, I think in my a plus b, a minus b, I reproduced both of them. I'm not going to bother with that right now. We're just going to add on the a to the 1. So it's parallelogram time. Not a whole lot to say because we've been doing so many of these. Alright, so we have a parallel line. Now we need another one, but let's clean up our work so we don't accidentally click the wrong point on the wrong uh, circle or line or anything like that. Oh, I suppose I needed this line still. Well, I don't need it, but I'm going to keep it uh, just so that you can see what's going on. So we need a line through this point, the, the end point of the 1, parallel to the extended line containing the A. Yeah. 
There we go. So now we've got our parallelogram constructed. And we can get rid of just about everything. But we'll have our copy of A. Oops, we need that one. Yep. We've got our copy of A reproduced. So that's down at this point right here. And then using a circle with radius A, we can now append it on to the end of our one. So as A gets bigger, this gets bigger. Fantastic. Okay. So we've got A and 1, so we've got A plus 1 sitting here. Fantastic. We're going to the midpoint between them. Oh, I suppose I shouldn't have gotten rid of that line so early because I'm going to need, it's the diameter and I need to intersect in order to find the midpoint, the center of the circle that we're going to construct. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our circle here. It's got diameter uh, A plus 1. And what we're going to do is the point where the 1 starts and the A stops, so this, uh, this fun little fella here, we're going to get a perpendicular line through him. So the reason this uh, ends up working is because uh, we have sort of some, we're going to get some similar right angled triangles. And maybe I'll illustrate that a little bit in a moment. But we've got our perpendicular line. Now we just need to get its intersection point with the big circle. There we go. Okay. So, um, I'll do my, my sort of proof explanation with uh, the forest green color. So, we have here with the, the diameter, because it's a point on the semicircle, we get a right angle. Okay. So, this, uh, this right angle triangle has um, diameter A plus 1, or has hypotenuse A plus 1. So now if we consider these two right angle triangles, okay, we've got uh, one, th these two are similar, and we've got one as a base, and then some other unknown quantity. We could call it x. And one to x has got to be the same ratio as x to a. Because remember this whole diameter is a plus one, so this is a, this is one. So one to x is the same as x to a. Well, how can we do that? 1x and a have to be in geometric progression. So a has got to be x squared, or rather x has got to be square root of a. So now we can, well, actually we can get rid of most of this. And just connect up our two points here as a nice little line segment. Uh, we'll make it orange, I guess. But this segment here is square root of A. Okay. It's all based on this A right here. So we make A really tiny. This guy is going to get really tiny as well. Okay. Make him really big. A is going to get much bigger. So now, if we make A of size 1, we should basically get size 1 here. Let's see if we can be particularly careful. Let's see if I can show this off. Put this guy here and this one here. Now look, root A is lying on the circle, so root A must be 1 as well. Okay. But now if we, we take A and make it less than 1, it starts shrinking faster than root a. Why? Because if you take the square root of a number that's less than 1, it actually gets a little bigger. 
Take the square root of a big number, it's big, yeah, but it's not as big as that number. But you take the square root of a tiny number, it becomes bigger than that tiny number. And I think that's pretty nifty. So that's the last of the constructions uh, for constructible numbers. So now a plus b is constructible, a minus b is constructible, a over b, a times b, and now root a. Assuming you start with constructible numbers, you can get them all using only these, uh, these five methods. Repeated applications, of course. Okay, so that's going to be all I'm going to talk about uh, constructible numbers. Uh, that's, it, that's it for that, but uh, I'll probably do some more straight edge and compass constructions in the future. Hopefully you guys liked this tiny little mini-series within the series. Um, so it's a fun little mini-topic, and maybe someday I'll do some actual Galois theory or something, but way in the future, maybe when you guys are ready for it. Okay, assuming, of course, you're at the, the target level of, like, grade 7 or, or, or ninth grade or something, the sort of place that you'd be doing uh, straight edge and circle constructions. Okay? If you're a university person watching it, look for a Galois theory course coming up, and uh, you can learn on it. You, you can learn it on your own. But uh, that's it for me for now. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.